This is Mr. Martin. These are video notes for Precalculus Advanced Unit 7. This corresponds to Section 7.7 .7 in your textbook. Uh, this is the last example in your notes packet, so if you uh, happen to have uh, given this one a try uh, before watching this video, you can uh, go through and check your solution. Uh, I want to point out we have something a little bit different in this problem. Most of the problems uh, previously we've uh, found solutions over the interval 0 to 2 pi and this one I want to find the intervals from 2 pi to 4 pi so the two ways that you can think about this are what are the solutions on your second revolution around the unit circle or again if you think about the sine or cosine curve the graph of them now we want to look at the interval of the graph that's between 2 pi and 4 pi and find out what angles satisfy our equation. So we've got 4 cosine squared theta minus 3 is equal to 0. And just like the other examples, we're going to isolate our trig function. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. 4 cosine squared theta is equal to 3. Then I'll divide both sides by 4. And uh, lastly, I'll take the square root of both sides. So I get cosine theta equals positive or negative square root of 3 over 4. All right. Again, uh, be careful when you take a square root. Just like we did in algebra, you're going to have a positive answer and a negative answer. So uh, simplifying this, that would be the square root of 3 over the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is just 2, so that's square root of 3 over 2. And that should look familiar to you as an x-coordinate, 4 pi over 6. So we're looking at pi over 6. We know my coordinate there is going to be positive root 3 over 2 and 5 pi over 6. Our coordinate there will be negative root 3 over 2. Then I have 7 pi over 6. Another uh, cosine is going to be negative root 3 over 2. And then in the fourth quadrant I have 11 pi over 6 and my coordinate there is going to be positive root 3 over 2. So if we were looking for the solutions from 0 to 2 pi these would be our solutions but now we've got to go around one more time so each of my values, do you have an idea, if you think you have an idea, of what my new values would be as I go around one more revolution? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out what those are. Otherwise, what we're looking at here is one revolution past each of these. So a revolution corresponds to 2 pi. And since we're dealing with 6, our 2 pi is going to be 12 pi over 6. So I just need to figure out what one revolution past each of these would be. So one revolution past pi over 6 is going to be pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. So that's going to be 13 pi over 6. So that's going to be one of our answers. Or one revolution past 5 pi over 6. So 5 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. That would be 17 pi over 6. And then we would continue doing the same thing for the other two values. 7 pi over 6 plus a full revolution around. That gives us 19 pi over 6. And the last value, 11 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6 is going to give us 23 pi over 6. So these would be our four solutions over the interval 2 pi to 4 pi. So now looking at our general solutions for part B, again we talked in a previous video these two solutions are 180 degrees apart so we can actually use one equation for both of those solutions. So for those, we would have pi over 6 
plus pi times k. So the first pi would get us to 7 pi over 6. That would be pi times 1. Pi over 6 plus pi times 2 would get me back over to this uh, spot in the first quadrant, which, which would be my 13 pi over 6, and so on. And then I would do another equation for 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, since those are 180 degrees or pi apart. 5 pi over 6 plus pi k. And there you have your general solutions to this equation. So as always, make sure that you're asking questions as you go, and uh, we'll see you next time.